Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving women leaders. And we talk about leadership purpose and its importance for you. I am a college professor, and when I am not doing that, I am speaking, writing, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women leaders how to find, and not only find, but how to stay in alignment with their leadership purpose so they can make a meaningful difference right there in their career, leadership, or business. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Leadership Purpose with Dr. Robin podcast. So glad you're here today and that you take time out of your busy schedule, whatever you're doing in this moment to listen in. Really appreciate you for being here. And today I am talking with Heather Dominic. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Heather. She is the founder of businessmiracles.com and a highly sensitive leadership mentor. Since 2010, Heather has taught thousands of highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe how to release limiting beliefs, overcome fears, and develop new leadership skills in order to excel in business and life by doing things differently to create more impact and more income. She's the creator of the highly sensitive leadership training programs, and she has appeared on Lifetime Television and has published in numerous books including Stepping Stones to Success alongside Deepak Chopra. She's an exceptional facilitator and teacher who is known for creating safe, sacred environment for true transformation, whether delivering training online or in person. And let me add one more thing. She is the host of the outstanding The Business Miracles podcast that I personally enjoy. So welcome, Heather Dominic. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that introduction. And I'm just really looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. And since you're looking forward to it, let's just jump right in. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I read I read from your bio and that gives us a sense of who you are. But why don't you tell us in your own words more about you and then about the work you do? Sure. So I would say probably in my own words, it's interesting because you and I were talking about this uh, before our podcast conversation, and that is that at the heart of everything I do is I am a teacher. I would say I feel pretty solid that that is my life purpose. I can remember literally one of my earliest memories is from preschool. And for playtime, I uh, constructed a classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it already. <laughs> Where I was um, teaching basic life skills, although I don't think that's what I would have been able to call it at the time, but basically like how to be your best preschool self. <laughs> Wow. So, yes, I have definitely um, been a teacher in many forms and including I was a former high school drama and English teacher. And now through the work that I do, I've been self-employed for almost 20 years now. And, and at the, the heart of everything is to be able to teach the highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders that I serve to really be able to be their most empowered self as a highly sensitive in the world. So yeah, I think that probably says it and I'm happy to answer anything else. I love that. I can imagine you now as a little one, you know, teaching <laughs> and you learn, you learned your calling early on. Yes, You're still for fun. For fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Okay. So you mentioned, and I mentioned also too, that your work is around helping highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders, but there might be some folks who have not heard this term in the way that you're using it, highly sensitive. So help us to understand what you mean when yes. you say highly sensitive. Definitely, definitely. So first, I think it's valuable just to clarify that the phrase highly sensitive is, is not created by me. It came out of a flurry of 
research that really began in the mid 1990s. The woman who's most known for research in connection to the, what it means to be a highly sensitive person is Dr. Elaine Aaron. And the books that she's written based on her research. However, she's far from the only researcher. And in short, the definition of what it means to be highly sensitive is first and foremost that it is biological and physiological. So you are born into the world highly sensitive. And what that means is your nervous system is wired to take in stimulation at a much higher degree than someone who is not highly sensitive. And so you can think of stimulation in regards to the five, six senses, right? That you have a stronger reaction to say sounds or smells or touch, also energy, also information. And I hope just even hearing that definition, you would start to, as a listener, begin to realize like, oh, that would really impact the way that you interact with the world, the way that you process the world. And a lot of people who are highly sensitive and unaware of being highly sensitive find that it has a very negative impact on their experience. There tends to be a lot of overwhelm that comes. Again, just hopefully it makes sense. Like, oh, yes, if I'm feeling overstimulated, then I would experience overwhelm at a much deeper degree or level than someone who maybe is experiencing, you know, 21st century overwhelm by having too much to do. The work that I do is to support highly sensitives with learning how to train and manage their nervous system so that they can really have access to what I refer to as their highly sensitive strengths, and then really put those strengths to service in the form of entrepreneurship or leadership. And my definition of leadership is quite broad, which is part of why I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, because I don't see leadership as only in titled positions, but really more of how we choose to show up in all parts of our experience. So as a highly sensitive leader, that might be as leader of yourself and your life. It might be leader within your family or relationships, or then of course, leader in the more traditional sense of work, business, career. So that's kind of the scoop on what it means in regards to highly sensitive and also what it means in connection to the work that I do. Yes, that's very informative. Do you happen to have an example, and you gave us some of this, for someone who's like, oh, this is the first time I'm hearing this. I might be someone who's highly sensitive, maybe not an extreme end of it. What's something possibly in a day, a work day or at home, some behavior or characteristic that they might be able to recognize? Absolutely. So, you know, first, it definitely shows up differently for each highly sensitive, but there does tend to be a shared understanding of feeling things more deeply. So, again, we could start with kind of like the basic physical senses. I know for myself, I can, for example, walk into a room or back in the day when we would walk into restaurants and I would like instantly have a sense of like, is the music too loud? Is the light too bright? Uh, Where is the most ideal space for me to sit where I feel like my senses aren't going to literally be overwhelmed or overstimulated so I can actually hear the conversation with the people that I'm sitting with. So that's a way of kind of getting a sense of like, oh yeah, I might be highly sensitive in that regard. Uh, When applied to relationships, it could be you have a sense of when you're sitting with colleagues, for example, or now again, these days connecting on Zoom or a video of any kind, or even just a conference call. And, but you can feel or get a sense of like, what's the vibe in the group? 
uh, what maybe somebody's wanting to say but not saying, uh, who maybe is having difficulty with somebody else in the group, and most likely you're picking up on all of that. And of course, that would apply to family relationships or, or friends as well. So those are just some, again, kind of more like physical, tangible experiences and also relational experiences that could start to give you the sense of, oh, you know, I might be highly sensitive. I will also say that, you know, when I tend to connect with people who are first learning that they're highly sensitive and I go through some of these, you know, kind of more basic examples, what I often hear in response is, wait, you mean that's not happening for everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, it's, it's really, really not. So. Yes. Yeah. Those are very helpful examples. And I am familiar with Elaine Aaron's work from the 90s because I had a friend point out to me who had been reading this work and said, mm. I think you might be highly sensitive. Ah. Like, what do you mean? But mm. as it turns out, I am highly sensitive and I've learned to manage it mm -hmm. in a way that I'm not always overstimulated. So right. I appreciate you and the work you're doing just from my own standpoint. If I had known you back then, maybe I would learn much sooner. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a good friend who connected you with the book, at least. Yes. Yes. And it sounds like uh, you're very passionate about this work. So tell us something that you enjoy. What really lights you up about the work you're doing? And tell us why that is. Wow. Oh, what a beautiful question. I would say what lights me up about the work is a, a trend that I have just come to understand and feel just really honored to consistently witness, which is when a highly sensitive begins the leadership training process with me, there is first a, a sense of relief that they're not alone and a sense of relief that maybe there actually isn't something wrong with them. Then the next phase is a beginning to really learn and understand and access that these aspects about themselves that they perhaps up until that point have only seen as negative actually hold a lot of positives. And then from there to have the honor of witnessing the highly sensitive entrepreneur or leader begin to use those positive aspects about their highly sensitive nature and start to experience the rewards, whether that might be in relationships begin to improve or they actually begin to enroll clients in their work or they're able to take an idea to uh, an actual an actualization and really see the positive impact. And all of that, every single moment of, of that process and that journey is like beyond rewarding. Like I just feel so grateful that I get to do this work and that I, I get to have a part in this kind of transformation for so many people. Yes. And you get to see the growth and the progression yes. right before your eyes, yeah, right before your eyes. It's amazing. And it's um, really like just incredible. That's awesome. And it, it's clear that you have a level of expertise in this area and that you've been doing this work for a while. And I'd argue that you started when you were teaching the little ones back oh. when you were four or five years old, yes. but in your professional capacity, you've been doing this work for quite some time now, and I've imagined you developed expertise. So for the people who are listening, uh, they could be high achieving women in leadership roles, unofficial, official, all the ways you describe leadership. What's something that you could share with them, a piece of advice to help them in this moment? And when you say this moment, are we talking about like acknowledging the global moment or just the day to day? <laughs> just, day just, just day to day at whatever time they're listening, whatever okay. day and time they're listening, whether they are still at their desk or on their phone in motion, just day to day life. Yes. Well, you know, first and foremost, I would say if, you know, listening to the conversation so far, you're starting to get a sense that you're highly sensitive, pay attention to that. 
uh, definitely dive deeper into what that possibly means for you, because I will definitely say understanding that I was highly sensitive changed everything for me for the better. Uh, It improved my marriage. It improved the way that I show up in my work and has really, you know, brought such a sense of relief, but also a, um, yeah, just again, a real sense of reward as I was sharing earlier. So again, if you have a sense that you might be highly sensitive, let's look into that. If you have a sense that you're not highly sensitive, my invitation would be to you, who in your sphere is highly sensitive? Because that really brings us to the statistics that 20% of us are born into the world highly sensitive. So very, very likely someone, one out of five in your sphere is highly sensitive. And again, who might that be? Is it a child? Is it a friend? Is it a colleague? And how might understanding that they're highly sensitive really make a difference um, for you and, and your connection with them? And to me, in all honesty, that is also uh, an aspect of leadership, having an ability to look outside oneself and to understand that not everyone operates in the same way that you do. And how can that be utilized in a beneficial way for, for everyone involved? So that, that would be what I would recommend for this moment. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. And 20% is a high number. You know what? I so appreciate you saying that because usually I hear the exact opposite where everyone says, oh, that's such a low number and that we're the, we're the odd ones out. So I really <laughs> love that reframe that it is. There's right. There's 20% of us. <laughs> I mean, if you think one out of five, and just as you mentioned in your you know helpful advice, one out of five, we just think about five people in our life and our family and our job. Exactly. Oh, so, yeah. So that's yes. how I see it as a high number. Yes. Okay. So now, as you know, my work has to do with leadership purpose. And so when you hear the term leadership purpose, what pops into your mind? Well, when I hear the term leadership purpose, honestly, what pops into my mind first is how am I meant to fulfill that? And then from there, my thought is, how would the world be different if everyone asked that question? So I really think there's such value to that approach, uh, which is why I just, again, like really appreciate the, the work that you do. And then for myself and the work that I do, I know that a lot of highly sensitives who come to me, they can't equate one with the other wait, I'm highly sensitive and a leader. So I think there's, it's, we're, we're at a a precipice, a really important time in, in our global society experience where there is meant to be a shift in the way that we define leader. So everyone ask, what is the leadership purpose that you're meant to fulfill? Yes. Yes. Uh, Do you think it's important for them to do that? And if so, why? I do think it's important. And I think it's important because it would shift the way that each individual is showing up, not only within themselves, but within service to others. And I really feel like we're lacking that to such a deep degree right now. And if we were all pausing and asking that question, we would really be having a different experience. There would be less of a feeling of isolation to start. There would be less of a feeling of disempowerment. And there would be more of a feeling of connection versus divisiveness. Yes, yes. And of course, I agree wholeheartedly. (laughs) Singing to the choir. (laughs) Of course. Right. Right. Yes. You know, leadership purpose is something that I think, uh, as you mentioned, is important and would be helpful for for all of us to know. All right. Time is flying by and we're coming now to the end of our episode here. But I'm guessing those people who said, 
oh, wow, I learned something new, a highly sensitive person, or they were reintroduced to it or recognize it in someone else that they might want to hear more from you and to follow you and learn more about being highly sensitive. How can they be in touch with you? Yes. So you can find me at businessmiracles.com and you'll find out more about what it means to be a highly sensitive entrepreneur and leader when you go to businessmiracles.com. And you can also find ways to connect with me, whether that be social or uh, email or a conversation. And I would be happy to connect in all of those ways. That sounds wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you so much for bringing business miracles right into our spaces, right into our hearts. And I will add business and leadership miracles. Thank Thank you, you. Heather Dominic, for being here today. It was a delight to talk with you. Thank you so much. And for everybody who wants to get in touch with me, I am RobinLOwens.com. Actually, I am not RobinLOwens.com. That's my website. (laughs) 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 So you can reach me at RobinLOwens.com or social media, RobinLOwensPhD. And until next time, this is Dr. Robin. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, Head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Robin signing off. See you next time.